Y'all remember that Let Me Be Frank video Kevin Spacey put out after his career was seemingly vanquished from our realm thanks to the whole sexual assault is generally frowned upon bump? Well, uh, that was 2018. That was a pre-pandemic nightmare. Oh, how far we've come. But wait! Things aren't over yet for the star of such classics as L.A. Confidential, Seven, The Usual Suspects, and, uh... K-Pax. Uh, no, sir. Turns out Vanilla Lex Luthor had actually just cocooned himself up and has been reborn into the beautiful direct-to-streaming phase of his career. Well, at least until he winds up in jail for all that sexual assault. After all, if there's one place sure to lock up creepy pedo celebs, it's the UK. Anyway, uh, I don't usually comment on stuff like this, but I get the feeling we're about to be gifted with some proper bad movie magic. See, a week or so ago, the trailer premiered for a little movie called Peter 5-8. And well... I found her. She's here. Looks great, guys. It's all coming back, isn't it? Now, this isn't the first post-Me Too film for Spacey to take part in. He also famously was cast in Franco Nero's The Man Who Drew God, and was more recently cast in an upcoming Hungarian, uh, let's call it historical epic, uh, Gateway to the West, a film which co-stars Christopher Lambert and Eric Roberts, so you know it's nothing but pure unfiltered quality. And he appears to be a Catholic priest, which just... Wah, can't make this shit up. But anyway, that trailer. I'm obviously not the first to talk about this thing. A whole bunch of prominent YouTubers have already taken a peek at it, but, uh, y'all. <laughs> what the fuck is this? She will experience loss. Make it messy, Peter. First of all, Spacey playing a homicidal stalker. What a stretch, guys. Um, of course, the producers of this film probably aren't too worried about being on the nose, especially after this statement defending the latest round of legal challenges for Spacey. While it's unfortunate that increased negative press is timed with Kevin returning to work, it's also to be expected. There are those who wish for him not to act, and they are outnumbered by fans worldwide who await an artist they have enjoyed for decades returning to the screen. The production has no knowledge or comment on the various swirling allegations and believe it's a matter for the courts to determine validity if it exists. Peter 5-8 is a film for fans who care more for the art than the scandal. Art. What's even better is director Michael Zyko Hall's, uh, or Zyko, like, whatever, uh, a statement about working with Spacey. Uh, quote, Kevin was a joy to work with kept everyone laughing between takes, and delivered what I think will be a surprising treat for his fans. Oh, I bet it's a surprising treat. Even more surprising than the bombshell news that sexual predators can also be charming. Uh, Michael Zako Hall is not someone I'm familiar with. His only other feature directing credit is 2020's Carry On, which uh, could very well be my jam. Could even be a legit great film, no idea. But this, this fucking thing, oh boy. Uh, also, just sideline, uh, what's this tagline about? The guilty always pay the price. Oh, my God. Come on. Like, you guys know what you're doing here. Let's not play coy. You're, you're exploiting Kevin Spacey's sexual assault allegations for coverage of your shitty, unoriginal little thriller. And hey, if you want to do that, more power to you. But let's be honest with ourselves, all right? This is pure, unadulterated exploitation. You're not, you know you're making a shitty movie. You know it. You know this is not a great piece of art. You're trying to make a buck off of a person who is still super famous, but not necessarily for all the right reasons anymore. So the trailer starts off with this chick, played by Jet Jaguar, who has moved to a small town and is being spied on by, well, Peter 58, Kevin Spacey, looking like an undercooked Thanksgiving turkey in July. Seems this chick, Lydia, has gone missing, seemingly on the run from some sort of criminal, and is now living under the name Sam. So Peter looks for his own place, shacks up with Lydia's neighbor, played by Rebecca de Mornay, who I'm convinced is still above this material, but whatever, and he communicates with his mysterious boss, who talks to him, uh, through a painting? Okay, I'm sorry, that's just, <laughs> that's just an unreleased Kevin Spacey YouTube video. There's no, that's, that's what we were supposed to get on Christmas 2020, right there. What would Christmas Eve be without a message from me? Uh, so Pete confronts Sam and, oh, come on. There's no way anyone looked at this image and didn't say, hold up. We're gonna get memed to fuck over this. Like, no one? Like, no one had anything to say about how just 
not good this shot is, right? Just frumpy Kevin Spacey sitting in a chair, being all like, hey girl, I know what you done did. This stupid fucking Frank Underwood accent. <laughs> Uh, all right, so then it shows that she was a lounge singer because originality is dead, I guess. Uh, and she got into some murdery business or got upset over BF macking out with someone. And oh, there's Kevin Spacey seemingly cocking a pool cue like a gun. I, re I really hope that that is uh, that's actually what's happening. Oh man, I hope, oh my god, what if it's like a spy pool cue, like a James Bond pool cue, and uh, he's actually, it's actually a gun. Oh my goodness. Anyway, then his boss, who is, is that Jake Weber? Bro, you started in Down of the Dead 04, what's going on here, man? Uh, anyway, I, I, who tells Peter uh, to basically just kill everyone, uh, he does so, and that's the movie, according to the trailer. Lots of shots at Kevin Spacey with a sniper rifle, and... People getting doused in CGI blood. Cut, print, we've got it, guys. Uh, now look. This looks awful. It's a visual mess. Everything it looks incredibly cheap. And for some reason, it all rests on the celebrity of a noted criminal sex pest? Noted alleged criminal sex pest. Just, it's a weird flex, guys. Uh, it's very obvious that this is an example of celebrity exploitation gone wrong. We've uh, we've had former stars accepting large sums of money to appear in movies that would otherwise never be seen, seemingly since the dawn of cinema. Most recently, Bruce Willis was uh, notably a part of the seedy underside of the DTV market, having done a shitload of piss-poor action films as a means of saving up money due to his tragic aphasia diagnosis, forcing him to retire. We didn't know whether to burn it or put it in a museum. I'm sure they said the same thing about me. But here's the thing. People actually like Bruce Willis. He is, by all accounts, an okay guy. Maybe a little difficult to work with if you don't know how camera lenses work, but still, not someone accused of multiple sexual assaults, so comparatively pretty chill. Kevin Spacey, meanwhile, <laughs> is Kevin Spacey. And no matter how much you try and appeal to the... Uh, anti-cancel culture pro-sex pest movement. Uh, actually, wait, no, I can just stop there. It's not a great look. But that all said, I can't wait to watch Peter 5.8. It looks like a dumpster fire, and boy howdy, I do enjoy slathering on some flame retardant and doing a little dumpster diving every once in a while. I can't wait to check it out on... Plex. Go watch a movie.